Yeah, I don't. I don't really see this as a goose. I see it as a motor because the goose came along to save the railroad as a scenic railroad, and this isn't a scenic railroad to me. It's being used as a motor because it's being used to not run the steam train to save money, like its original purpose. So to me, this will always be motor three. Just behind me is Galloping Goose 3. That's number three of seven, as it's the member of a flock of geese known as the Denver and Rio Grande Motors. This train cost $2,586.18 to construct in 1931. That would be about $43,892.07 when adjusted for inflation. The first motor hit the rails and almost immediately jumped off them in 1912. It was constructed using basic mechanic know-how and an overload of backyard engineering supplied with a shoestring budget as the railroad was about one move away from filing bankruptcy at the time of the vehicle's inception. But we didn't come to talk about the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad, their bankruptcy or the derailment of the original goose. We came to talk about Motor 3 or the Denver and Rio Grande Southern Galloping Goose Number 3 for short. After the overwhelming success of Motors 1 and 2, the railroad would ask Jack Odenberg if he could create an even larger version of the train. They wanted to begin serving the Dolores and Durango line with a motor instead of a steam train, as a motor only took one motorman and about 32 gallons of gas to complete the journey. Whereby the steam train here at Knott's Berry Farm can easily consume hundreds of gallons of diesel fuel in one day. That's why, in my opinion, this goose number three is the only one being used as a motor instead of a goose because Knott's uses number three to save on fuel costs on the slow days, just like the railroad used to all those years ago. Number three started its life as a Pierce Arrow limousine. After six years of hard use on unpaved roads, the car was sold to Jack Odenberg for its scrap value. Jack would bring the car back to the railroad shop and set to work on the monumentous task of creating a motor twice the size of the ones that had come before. The train would far exceed the expectations of its popularity and begin running full more often than not. By 1946, the train had bounced its way through tens of thousands of miles of poorly maintained rails, all at 17 miles per hour. At this time, number three would lose its almost destroyed Pierce Arrow cab in favor of a Wayne bus body. This bus was originally used as a troop transport in Europe during the war, so I guess the goose can get into knots for free during military days because it's a veteran. And hey, I wonder who it would bring as its free guest. Number three has two interesting stories from its past as Motor 3. It would seem that one winter it was purposefully derailed. As it was headed downhill, the motorman tried to apply the brakes. He would turn to his only passenger, a pregnant woman, explain to her, we're going to need to jump into a snowbank because the train is a runaway. They would survive unhurt, and a fella from track maintenance would see the train coming, quickly wrap two heavy chains around the tracks, and purposefully derail number three. It would only take one night for the train to be repaired with railroad scrap metal that can be seen on the train to this day. One spring, a Girl Scout troop would take number three on a round trip ride. When they arrived for the return trip, they had found that the train had been oversold. Not wanting to leave the girls stranded, the motorman allowed them to ride him back. The girls sat atop a nice wood bench and they had a good time watching the rails and the scenery go by. When they got to the end of the line, four men were there to pick up the occupied coffin they had mistaken for a bench. But long after all this, Motor 3 would miss a mail delivery due to an exploded steam plow blocking the path and the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad would inevitably lose the US Postal Service contract forcing them to begin building the trains as the Galloping Goose, a scenic railway. This move would definitely bring in the bucks, but unfortunately not enough. And the last railroad job three would perform was the removal of its own rails. Little did the crazy mix of a car, a train, and a bus know that some of those rails would find their way to Knott's Berry Farm and become part of the Calico Railroad. And number three would be used for its original purpose, once again, to shuttle passengers during the slow time. Hey, 
I just wanted to say that in doing research for this episode, we found out so many interesting things about Motor Number 3 and the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad as a whole. And uh, we just wanted to say thank you to everybody who sent in photos, videos, stories. Uh, and most of all, thanks to all the clowns that keep this thing going and have kept it going throughout the years. Uh, your love for it is more important than all the duct tape that holds it together. There's gotta be a reason it's silver. <laughs> <laughs>